All right, well, Debbie Turner Bell is off today, but before she left for vacation, she sat down with our regulars for the ultimate left, right, and middle discussion of 2013. Well, it is Thursday again, and it's time for a special day after Christmas edition of our take on the news from the left, right, and middle. Once again, from the right is Washington attorney Horace Cooper, who joins us from our Washington bureau. And from the left, Pulitzer Prize award-winning journalist Karen Hunter. Welcome to both of you, and I hope you had a great Christmas. Oh, it was wonderful. Yeah. Well, in the spirit of Christmas, let's talk about this uh, uh, issue of what color Santa should be. Should Sh Santa only be the uh, portly, elderly white guy, or should Santa be a little more multicultural? Who wants to go first? I think Horace should take this I one. I'll start with this. One okay. is, um, when I get asked a question like that, I immediately ask the person, why are they unhappy with Santa? Santa's never hurt anybody, he's never beat up anybody, he's never robbed anybody, he's never stolen anything from anybody. He's just a well, nice, jolly guy. Well, he's stolen Christmas from Jesus, Help. but that's a whole other conversation. Wow, Debbie. <laughs> I think commercialism has done that. Santa <laughs> didn't do that. The point here is, uh, what's wrong with this particular individual character? Are we gonna go over um, all of the historical people in the world and say, if you spend time talking about them, that you have to change who they were, transmogrify their background and their circumstance. Santa goes all over the world, and he's all over the world, but he doesn't become multicultural by doing it. Okay, spoiler alert, uh, and little Johnny and Mary, if you're listening, turn, turn, off, turn off your TV right now. Turn it down, actually. There is no Santa. Okay, so I, yeah, oh I just I just need goodness. to be clear about oh that. Oh my goodness! I just need to be clear about that. And and if oh. we're gonna talk about history, Saint Nick, uh, the original Santa, was actually Turkish, which means he was a brown person. And I think really the issue here is about raising children in a multicultural world where they see people who look like them and identify with people who look like them and feel good about themselves. It is akin to giving a black child a white doll baby. It's a, it's akin to looking at television and all you see are people who don't look like you. Therefore, feel some ways about yourself. I, and I, I, again, Santa's not real, so I really don't have a, 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 a horse in this race. I could care less. But I do understand the argument. And, and my question is, so what if there's a black Santa at a, at a mall? So what? Why is that an issue? Why did this become such wait, a wait, big wait, deal? Wait, 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 wait. It isn't the question, so what if there's a black Santa? It's a free country. Anybody can do what they want. The question is, why... Is it odd if there is no black Santa? The Santa Claus that we know comes actually from Finland, not from Turkey. And that character was a white cat. And he had always okay. been a white cat. And, and the North Pole is cold, so you're not going to find very many black people there anyway. So I can agree with you on that. Let, let me step in and just say that, uh, the views of our left-leaning guests today are not necessarily the views of Arise. <laughs> what? <laughs> you believe in Santa? <laughs> no, I don't. I think okay. Christmas is about Jesus. No. Okay. But well, just, you, you know, know, there might be some kids watching, and I don't want I the told angry them to send them to I, Karen I turned Hunter. down the TV for a minute, you know? <laughs> but let, let, let's ask this question, though. Uh, and, and Karen, I want to I pose this to you. And I understand that the, po the point that you're trying to make, that it does erode the psyche when and everything that you see in mainstream media looks like someone other than yourself. But isn't it sort of a part of cultural tolerance to be able to accept Santa the way he actually looks? I'm, I'm going to make a confession. When I did believe in Santa, I think I was four, maybe four, three, four, and he was the white guy with the red suit, and I left cookies for him, and I was excited and tried to stay up to watch him come down the chimney. We didn't have one, though. But, you know, the, the, the fictional <laughs> chimney that we would have had. Uh, you know, you, I, 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 it didn't matter to me as a kid. Do you know what I'm saying? And I don't think for most kids, we infect these kids with this, with this stuff. And unfortunately, because there's 24-hour cable and bombardment of, of yeah, every kid now has some sort of tablet, that they're being infected with this, we have to address it as adults and, and have the conversation. What we need is for that kind of kid-like mindset that it doesn't matter what your skin color is. It doesn't matter what your gender is. These are irrelevant features. Who your character is, that's who we want to get to know. If we could promote that idea 
all this country would be better, and frankly, the planet would be better. I agree with all you. All right. I well, well. Speaking that. of Christmas, of course, uh, and it hasn't really been that long ago. There was a um, a holiday that was created uh, to increase the awareness of the Afrocentricity of the African American community, and that's Kwanzaa. Uh, and it's celebrated over a certain period of days. And I must admit that I don't know how many days that it is. And I'm not in the minority. There's a very small proportion of the black community that actually observes Kwanzaa. So what's your take on this? Is, uh, is Kwanzaa significant and should it be significant? Uh, Karen, go. I think it's significant to those for whom it's significant. I think people should be allowed and to embrace whatever they want to embrace during this time of giving and sharing, which are all of the tenants of Kwanzaa. And I don't know them either because I don't celebrate. I celebrate Christmas. I actually don't celebrate Christmas because Jesus wasn't born in December. We could have that discussion another time. But I think that we should not disparage people who want to celebrate something that makes them feel good about themselves and share gifts, whether it's Kwanzaa or Hanukkah, which is not a made-up holiday. But aren't they all kind of made-up holidays if we really sit down and think? If you somebody, go back to the history I mean, of it. come on. Like, somebody sat down and made up these holidays. Horace, what are your thoughts? Uh, okay. Uh, I guess I'm in the disparagement camp. It's post-Christmas now. I can just come out and say, uh, if the holiday is measured in hours of how old it is, I'm not having it. <laughs> it's a holiday that is a separatist effort to take away from the time that we can come together and all acknowledge that Jesus is the reason for the season. And I guess we shouldn't have a Black History Month, and we shouldn't have HBCUs, no, 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 we have a Black and we Month. should not That's have not a... any of the things that uh, make the people Black History feel... Month, the Black History Month doesn't take away from whatever else is going on in, in, in February. How is this in taking fact, away? The people who are celebrating Kwanzaa aren't, it's its whole they can purpose. also celebrate Christmas, and they can it's also celebrate whatever purpose. else they want to celebrate. That doesn't... Its whole purpose is to somehow suggest that there's this other activity that's just as valuable, just as important. I can guarantee you this, in 500 years, there still, there will not be a Kwanzaa holiday recognized by wow. anybody. Wow. Well, I'm going to keep it going, right. just, just because. And I hope you're around. <laughs> <laughs> just to get Horace's goat. That's what Karen wants to do. All right. Well, speaking of getting goats, uh, let's talk about a very popular practice during the holiday season, no matter what your faith and beliefs are, and that is re-gifting. Is it rude to take a gift that's been given to you from someone else and give it to somebody else? Should we re-gift? Horace, go. I don't really like the idea, but um, <laughs> my family's watching, and they love it. <laughs> they think it's an amazing concept. Uh, I prefer to give people something that I've thought about, cared about, and, and, and presented it just for them. That would be my approach, but I know there are a lot of other people that have got a different idea. I think this is a bad idea. We need to sort of put the damper on it. I 100% agree with you. I think that there's not enough thought put into this holiday in the first place. I think that people do not think about people before they give them things. And, and I'd rather get nothing than for you to give me another pair of white leather boots, Mom. Just, just letting you know. <laughs> That's not but, cool. But on the other hand, if someone has given you something that you know you will never use, that you do not like, isn't it better to find that gift a home that will be appreciated? Wow. So if you didn't if want it, Debbie... If people were doing that, if people were really doing that there wouldn't even be this whole regifting conversation. It would be, wow, you gave me a perfect gift. I don't know why, where this came from. But instead, it's, I don't like it. Let's just get it out of my way as fast as I can. The best regifting is when you get the gift back that you gave two years ago. From somebody else. That's the best. Our, the and, best. And, and I'm going to end by telling you a quick story. That's exactly what happened to me. <laughs> Good for you. That's what you get. I regifted a gift, and like two years later, the exact same Thanks, person Karen. gave Good for it you. back to Good me. Good for them. So uh, there is the danger in regifting. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure. Horace Cooper, uh, Karen Hunter, thank you as always. You guys have a wonderful Good holiday. Evening. Thank you. You too. The regift can be the boomerang gift. You are watching Arise America.